By the end of the 19th century, many of the biggest and best pines had been removed, and the square timber trade with Britain was almost over. The last shipment of square timbers left Montreal in 1908, but trade in new products took its place. So now the, the economic incentive for the square timber trade in Canada is dying back, but at the same time you had the rise of a new market, the Americans, um, who were starting to encounter shortages of white pine and good lumber in there in the sort of northeastern United States in the Great Lakes area that was undergoing significant growth at this time. And they started looking north and we were their, we were their providers and we became their providers, but it was a new product. We started sawing up the logs into lumber. The bandsaw, it transformed the industry and lumber was a big production initially to Britain again, but then with the burgeoning development in the United States, there was a huge market for the lumber. These opportunities attracted families like the Shaws and the Crays, who came to Renfrew County from Scotland. The businesses they started at that time are now being managed by their great-great-grandchildren. John Shaw and his wife Barbara, they came from Scotland and they, they settled at Snake River by Lake Dory and, and uh, it's amazing how they started out and even the facilities that they that, that built. There was a dam that was built and then they had a water-powered sawmill that had a circular saw that they, they, sawed, uh, they sawed lumber and they did a lot of custom sawing. We trace our sawmilling heritage back to my great-great-grandfather. Uh, his name's J.D. McRae, John Duncan McRae. And uh, his parents immigrated from Scotland and uh, he sort of started into the sawmilling business for, for us. He, and he originally had uh, timber licenses in the bottom end of Algonquin Park. This is in the early 1890s. And unfortunately, the history kind of had to stop a little bit because everything burnt down. The whole town of Eganville burnt in the early 1900s. I think it was 1911. So his son then, my great-grandfather, had to uh, sort of start from nothing again and he uh, purchased a sawmill here in Whitney in, uh, I think it was 1917. And we've sort of been in the Whitney area ever since. Business soon picked up for these small sawmills as railway and road infrastructures opened up new areas for harvest not easily reached by rivers. Hardwoods like maples and oaks that didn't float well were now also available. Sawn lumber could be packed and shipped easily in rail cars. Railways were also important for the new pulp and paper industry. By the turn of the century, new technologies allowed paper to be made from wood pulp rather than rags. It was in the northern boreal forest that the pulp and paper industry would have its greatest impact. Our spruce species, especially black spruce in northern Ontario, had uh, the type of fibers that were ideally suited to making newsprint. And so uh, there was a lot of relationships between a pulp and paper mill and a newspaper chain. Um, so like the Spruce Falls mill in, in Capus Casing was the primary supplier for the New York Times. The mill was the lifeblood, and it was an employer of, of thousands of workers. Today, if you go into a pulp and paper mill, you see somebody sitting behind a computer, and they're checking out the whole system, and they're, you know, the machines are running faster than they ever have, producing more than they ever have. But flash back 100 years to 1917, and you go up to Iroquois Falls, or you go to Pine Falls in Manitoba, you go into a paper mill, and there are a 1,000 workers people walking around barefoot because uh, very few safety standards at the time, but it was also a slippery floor whereby you had to, the best traction was using no shoes. The pulp and paper industry would become one of the great industrial engines of the Canadian economy for the next seven decades. At the same time, pulpwood production meant that more of the land base was available for logging and a greater diversity of trees could be harvested. The lift stuck on the banks of the rivers and lake falling behind, cleaning up the shores, Sending forth a lot of 